Today on Public Eye News, Michigan drivers will get insurance refunds and Wisconsin's largest utility company plans to drop coal by 2035. Later, Ross Ray will have your weather and Michael Cudahy will have your sports update. Hello, my name is Brendan Ford. And I'm Andrew Hoover. Thank you for tuning in to Public Eye News. Tonight, WNMU-TV's ongoing series, Ask the Blank, will air tonight, joined by staffers from the DNR. Fisheries biologist John Bowman, wildlife biologist Dave Gentoft, and conservation officer Colton Galinas will be joined by J.R. Richardson, a representative from the Upper Peninsula's branch of the Michigan Natural Resource Commission. The show will air live at 8 p.m. tonight, November 4th, and be available later for online viewing at wnmuvideo.nmu.edu. As always, the show will be hosted by our very own Mike Settles. At Sparrow Hospital in Lansing, Michigan, hundreds of hospital employees are picketing along Michigan Avenue. The strike and subsequent picket is representing about 2,200 nurses, pharmacists, biotechnicians, and scientists who have been working without a contract since October 30th. On top of working without a contract, employees claim that the conditions are severely understaffed and they are exhausted after picking up the slack caused by the turnover rate. Sparrow Hospital denies they have a retention problem but are currently working on a new contract proposal including a 12% payment increase. The two parties plan to return to the negotiating table on November 9th alongside a third-party mediator. And good news, drivers of Michigan, all insured drivers will be receiving a refund somewhere between $100 and $675 per car. The money is coming from a $5 billion surplus in the budget in the Michigan Catastrophic Fund, whose association board voted unanimously in support of the refund checks, coming two days after Governor Gretchen Whitmer called for the refunds to be given after years of price gouging by insurance companies. The governor's proposal would see the entire $5 billion surplus given out as checks, totaling about $675 per car, while other formulas show a check of about 200 or 100 per car. The exact amounts, how they will be sent, eligibility, and other fine print will be released within the next coming months. Wisconsin vehicle taxes have brought in nearly $63 million in the 2021 fiscal year after what is known as wheel taxes has risen by 12.1% over the past year. This is the seventh year in a row that there has been a double digit increase on these taxes. The money that these wheel taxes bring in are directed to go toward transportation, but by helping offset tax expenditures, it frees up funding for other municipal services such as parks and libraries. All residents pay the same wage for for these registration fees, unlike states like Michigan, where fees are based on the age and model of the car. Jason Stein, the research director for the Wisconsin Policy Forum, states that unless a state policy changes, fees will likely continue to increase and more communities will add these fees. Also in Wisconsin, WEC Energy Group announced on Tuesday that they plan on ridding of coal from their power mix by 2035. They are currently the largest utility company in Wisconsin and believe they can save customers almost a billion dollars by swapping to a cleaner energy source. They plan on doing this using solar, wind, and battery storage and wish to invest five and a half billion dollars in these renewables. The company has already shut down a coal plant last year in southeastern Wisconsin and wishes for the whole state to run on carbon-free electricity by 2050. And moving on to some more renewable energy news, Silflower, a plant that is not as common as it once was, is being planted around nine solar solar installations in Minnesota. Silflower is a plant that is great as forage for livestock, such as sheep. There are several solar installations that sheep roam around, which is beneficial, as it reduces how often the grass around the solar panels must be mowed. The flower is also a great habitat for bees, which scientists will be studying how bees interact with the plant. Within recent years, there have been a decline in the amount of bees, so we are all eager to see how this will work out. And don't touch that dial yet, because we will be back with your national and international news. Coming up on Austin City Limits. Saturday night at 11. 
Welcome back. The Las Vegas Raiders have released wide receiver Henry Ruggs Tuesday after he was involved in a car crash. Ruggs was driving his Chevrolet Corvette at around 156 miles per hour with a blood alcohol content more than double Nevada's legal limit. Ruggs rear-ended a car in front of him, killing the driver and her dog. Ruggs was in his second year in the league after being drafted by the Raiders, who have released him following the incident. Tina Otintor was the woman whose life was lost in the tragedy. Tragedy. And after weeks of regulatory and legal review, the Biden administration laid out new COVID-19 vaccine mandate rules, which will cover more than 100 million working Americans. Skylar Henry has more details from the White House. The White House laid out new rules which will require millions of unvaccinated working Americans to get the shot. We're now down from 100 to about 60 million unvaccinated Americans, 12 years and older. All federal employees, federal contractors, and healthcare workers at facilities receiving Medicare or Medicaid have until January 4th to be fully vaccinated. People who work at businesses with more than 100 employees must also be vaccinated by January 4th or test weekly and wear a mask at work. Folks who haven't gotten vaccinated yet, please get vaccinated. It's easy, it's accessible, and it's free. Businesses with unvaccinated workers could face fines of nearly $14,000 per employee per violation. And federal workers and contractors who don't get the shot will face disciplinary action, which could eventually result in them losing their jobs. They're putting fear into their employees, and it shouldn't be that way. They should ask us, hey, what do you want to do? More than two dozen states have already announced plans for lawsuits to block the new Biden administration mandates from taking effect. President Biden and his administration want to invade the personal lives of thousands of Georgians, burdening hundreds of businesses of all sizes and endangering countless jobs. Senate Republicans slammed the new mandates during a hearing Thursday morning. One recent survey found that 59 percent of unvaccinated workers are still not likely to get vaccinated, despite the mandates from this administration. But administration health officials defended the new rules, calling them a public health priority. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Moving on to some more COVID-19 news, Britain has given the okay to the first pill that has been shown to successfully treat COVID so far. The pill, Molnupiravir, is licensed for adults 18 years and older and has at least one risk factor for developing severe disease, such as obesity. P patients with a mild COVID case will take four pills twice a day over the span of five days. This pill would prove groundbreaking as treatment by medication for the worldwide pandemic. Several other nations are having regulators review the pill as they start purchasing it from the one who made the drug. And Russian President Vladimir Putin shut down workplaces nationwide this week to try to curb a devastating surge of the coronavirus. For more than a month, the, re the record death toll has been rising. Just this morning, nearly 1,200 deaths were reported. The real loss of life is likely to be much higher, as Elizabeth Palmer reports. Russia is in partial lockdown as record numbers of people die from COVID, mostly the Delta variant. The official figures say almost twice as many per capita as in the U.S. But the real total is far higher, says Alexei Raksha, a former government statistician. And uh, last week, the excess mortality was 3,800 a day, on average. Wow. And so almost four times the official estimate. Yeah, three and a half. The great irony is, last August, the Kremlin announced it had won the race to approve the world's first vaccine, Sputnik V. But it turns out most Russians didn't want it. And ads like this one meant to show that even tough guys get vaccinated haven't convinced them. Decades of corruption mean they just don't trust the government. In this regional hospital of 750 COVID patients, 700 are unvaccinated. Overall, only a third of Russians have had their shots. And at the outset, President Putin didn't help by waiting seven months to get his. Now, though, with a full-blown crisis on his hands, he's publicly urging everyone to get immunized. Is this going to be enough to get people vaccinated?
Some people trust Putin, but most people don't trust anybody. Which means the number of dead is only going to rise. Elizabeth Palmer, London. And after this short break, Ross Ray will have your weather and Michael Cudahy your sports update. Stay tuned. In the heart of North America, there is wild country. These are the Rocky Mountains, one of the most challenging places to grow up in on Earth. Here, the young must quickly learn the rules of their tribe to find their place. Journey from the American Southwest to the Canadian Arctic. Discover what it's like to be born in the Rockies. Wednesday night at 8 on WNMU-TV. And welcome back to Public Eye News. My name is Ross, and I'll be taking you through your weather today. Taking a look behind me at the Academic Mall here, we have some sunny skies, some green ground. That's going to be heating up a little bit throughout the weekend here, but we're going to be going back down to colder temperatures later on. Our current conditions for today are going to be sunny skies at a temperature of 43 degrees, our wind southwest at 10 miles per hour, and a barometric pressure of 30.21 and rising. Going on to later tonight, we're going to keep those clear skies. It's going to drop down a little bit chillier there with 34 degrees, and our winds are still going to be southwest at 10 miles per hour. Now, going on to tomorrow, the sun's going to be back up. Temperatures slightly raising a bit, up to 50 with the wind southwest at 10 miles per hour. Now, let's take a look across the UP here. We're going to be looking at a lot of sunny skies, especially across the one half of the UP here, except with our one outlier, and that's going to be Sault Ste. Marie at 40 degrees and cloudy. Manistique and Escanaba both at 45 and 44 respectively, and all the way down south of Menominee, it's going to be 45 and sunny. Moving to our other half of the UP here, 44 and sunny in Iron Mountain. Ironwood's going to be 42 and sunny. All the way up in Houghton, it's going to be a 45 and sunny back here in wonderful Marquette. It's going to be 43 and sunny now. Let's take a look at your week ahead. Now moving on to Saturday, it's going to be a high of 53, low 42 with some mostly cloudy skies. 57 is going to be our maximum here on Sunday with a low of 43 and those clouds are still going to be there. But the sun's going to peak out once again on Monday with a high of 54 degrees and a low of 40. That is it for weather. Now we're going to jump over to Michael for some not so sunny news in the sports world. Brad Aldrich's name is no longer on the Stanley Cup. To have your name engraved on the greatest trophy in sports is every hockey player's dream and they the NHL decided to X out Aldridge's name after it recently came to light that he sexually assaulted one of his own players during the 2010 playoffs. Some hockey fans have seen the photos and have been wondering if Aldridge should be the only one crossed off. The Chicago Blackhawks are in the middle of settlement negotiations with Kyle Beach, but according to records kept by Beach's attorneys, on January 11th, 2021, the Chicago Blackhawks informed Beach's team that they had no interest in a settlement. Keeping our eyes on the NHL, the, the Jack Eichel trade saga has finally come to an end. The Buffalo Sabres have traded Jack Eichel and a third round pick to and a third round pick. The original asking price was multiple first round picks, elite prospects, and quality NHL ready players. And what did they get in return? Alex Tuck, Peyton Krebs, and just one first and second round pick. The Vegas Golden Knights gave up one of their top players and prospects for Eichel, but likely won't see him touch the ice this season as Eichel and the Sabres were embattled in a conflict over what neck surgery the player should have. Dom Lecision compared the decision to Vegas adding another or compared the trade to Vegas adding another infinity stone to their team. And for you college football fans out there, the college football playoff committee dropped their first rankings Tuesday night. Michigan State is riding high after beating rival Michigan over the weekend and are ranked third in the poll. Georgia and a controversial choice in Alabama are one and three, whereas group of five juggernaut Cincinnati is ranked sixth despite being second in the AP's top 25. Ohio State is sixth with supposed rival Michigan behind them at seventh. And if you're a Wisconsin Badger or Iowa Hawkeye fan, well, you're behind the Minnesota Golden Gophers who are ranked 20th, whereas your teams are 21st and 22nd. Well, it appears that's all the time that we have for today. Thanks for joining us here at Public Eye News. My name is Brendan Ford. I'm Michael Cudahy. We'll see you tomorrow. The preceding program was produced by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television, in studios located in Elizabeth and Edgar Hardin Hall.